I know this is my situation right now, but you want to make it into a prison. Before I was born, he knew me. He had a plan for me. I want to change my life. I admire her courage. And maybe you think now that your life is wasted, but I have hope for you. Stay with me. A distorted vision. Let's read this scripture once again. Judah then said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's house until my son Sheila grows up. For he thought he may die too, just like his brothers. He has a distorted vision because he doesn't realize what is at the root of this problem. He is blaming this poor widow Tamar for he is afraid. He wants to keep his darling son far away from this dangerous lady. But he has a wrong interpretation. Uh, she is not to blame. His own sons are to blame for their death. But you, Father Judah, what went wrong with the upbringing? You are their father. Your sons, your children, they don't just become what they are today. You had a hand there. You had also some influence there. Or maybe it's the wife, the woman you married. She didn't care about God and his commandments. Maybe she is to blame or maybe that's just life. But you cannot blame this poor widow Tamar. Why are you punishing it? her? And if you, if you my brother, my sister, if you allow people with the wrong perspective, with the evil, wrong interpretation of what's happening in your life, the causes, the root of your, of your problems, if you allow those people to speak into your life, things will go wrong. Then you will be kept captivated in a cave, in a prison they have created for you. So this man Judah tells her, go back to your father's house. Your father's house is the house that, where your parents live. Now that's not progress. It's not natural. It's not healthy. Because in life, you are supposed to go into the next step, the next phase of your life, not go back to the place you left. When you were younger, you were supposed to be there in the house of your parents, but not now. So that's not a good situation to return to the old place, to the house of your parents. Not in this way anyway. And she realizes, well, I had a husband, he died. Then I had another husband, he died too. Am I to blame? Should I accept this situation? Am I a failure? I am a failure. And maybe you think now that you are a failure, that your life is wasted, but I have hope for you. Stay with me. Am I a failure? I don't know, but probably she was thinking I am a failure. Maybe you think I am a failure, that you are a failure in life, that your life is worthless. This man, Judah, someone you can trust, he should have helped her, but he rejected Tamar. And I imagine that she felt a lot of shame because you are returning to your parents. You were married twice. All your husbands, they die. Maybe even people blame you. They are afraid of you. And maybe she's thinking, am I a real woman? For these things happened in my life. These men, they died. And their own father is blaming me. I'm a widow. So many doubts, so many questions. Maybe you are filled now with a lot of questions, a lot of doubts for why is this happening in my life? I don't deserve this. Well, stay with me. If you allow the wrong people or your situation to speak into your life, you too will eventually feel ashamed. You feel this shame, like you are worthless, your life has ended, it is useless. It's like, uh, it's like life has created this cave for you, this prison, and you're supposed to stay there. This is who you are, stay like this. But this lady, Tamar, she said, no, 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 I refuse. I don't accept this faith. I don't accept it. I reject it. I know this is my situation right now, but you want to make it into a prison. 
and I was not born to live like this. You want to create this cave for me, this prison, and I should stay there. But it's not no longer my cave, it's your cave. And I refuse to stay in your cave any longer, for it's your interpretation of my life. It's not God's interpretation of my life. So it's your cave, not my cave, and I refuse to accept it, I reject it. Maybe you don't understand why your life is in such a mess. You don't understand why, but you know, this is not according to God's plan. This is not the plan God has for me. Before I was born, He knew me. He had a plan for me. And this is not my plan. I refuse this prison, this cave. I reject it in Jesus' name. And this woman, Tamar, in some way, I don't know how, she got this fighting spirit. I want to fight. I want to change my life. And she used all her wisdom until she had this breakthrough. And we admire, I admire her courage because her plan was very dangerous. People could have killed her. If you read the story in the Bible, what she did, people could have killed her and it was according to the law of those days. So it was very dangerous, but she had courage. It's like she said, I refuse to accept my faith. I will do everything I can do to change my life. And she dared to confront the situation. Don't accept it, but dare to confront it. We're gonna fight together with the Holy Spirit to change your life completely. Uh, and she had a son by the name of Perez. Perez means breakthrough, break every chain, every word people say over you, every evil thing, you break it, you refuse it, you reject it in Jesus' name. That's the name of Perez. And out of this line, out of this tribe, Perez, going to Jesus, comes Jesus, our Messiah. And the mother of Perez, Tama, you can read it in the Bible. And now 3,000 years later, we are still talking about this woman and her courage. This woman, a worthless woman, her life was over, but she had the courage. She said, no, I will not refuse this cave people have created for me. I will fight and I will use all my wisdom, all my courage. As now today, more than 3,000 years later, we are still talking about this woman and her courage, Tamar. Uh, let me read this scripture for you. It's in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it and run with it. It will change your life. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. You hear me? You listen to this scripture? God says, I have plans for you. Not to harm you, but to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Let me repeat it. For I know, says God, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I don't know your life. I don't know your pain, your misery. But I know someone who does know it. That's God. The God who created the heaven and the earth and he created you too. I don't know who is to blame for your present mess. I don't know who is to blame for your life. And I don't care for it. I do know God has a plan for your life. We are not blaming anyone. That's in the past. We are looking at the future. And God has a plan for your life. I have this wonderful prayer for you. And please repeat me. I say a piece of this prayer. And after me you say, you say the same words. Yes? Let's pray together. Dear God, you are mighty. You have a plan for my life. Almighty oh, Jehovah Jireh, your plans are to prosper me, not to harm me. You are not punishing me, but you see me and you want to help me. Oh Jehovah Nissi, your plans grant me hope and a wonderful future. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to accept my present situation. I rebuke it. I reject it. But I do accept and receive all the plans you have for me. I am blessed. I will be blessed. For you are my God and I am always on your mind. I am always on your mind. I thank you a lot and praise your mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I refuse to live in your cave any longer. If you want to hear more of these messages and if you want to support me, please like this message. You can also subscribe, share it with someone. But you, my brother, my sister, be blessed and stay blessed.